Hey, welcome to Park Notes. I'm Parker Set of Case. I'm a philosopher and theologian, and this is a channel where I help you study, think, and read more deeply. If you're familiar with this channel at all, you know I love the philosophy of artificial intelligence and the philosophy of mind, especially the intersection of the two. Now, a lot of people have left me comments asking for resources to learn about the history of artificial intelligence and how can we get a grasp on the current state of the art. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you seven books that I recommend in order to help you at least kind of comprehend, get a grip, get a grasp on what's going on and where did we come from. And I'm going to give you some free resources you can use today in order to continue learning about the state of the art. I'm also going to drop in my own history of artificial intelligence and my own broad overview. I'm not like a super expert in AI, but I know a lot of experts and I've had them on my podcast to talk. I've read some good books on AI, so I'm just metabolizing that and sharing it with you. So take it for what it is. I'm hoping to just whet your appetite. You should probably grab some of these books or check out those free resources that I share. Those will all be in the description as well as links to these. So I'm happy to just teach you as I continue to learn. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, but more on that later. Let's jump in with a list of the books that I'm going to be covering. So I'll give you a closer look at these books later in the video. I'll share the table of contents and talk about why I'm recommending them and who I'm recommending them for. But let me just give a broad overview of the books. First up is Artificial Intelligence, A Very Short Introduction by Margaret Bowden. If you're going to buy one book, this is it. Next up, we have Artificial Intelligence, A Guide for Thinking Humans by Melanie Mitchell. Another fantastic book. Then we have Artificial You, AI in the Future of Your Mind, Susan Schneider. Then we have This is Technology Ethics, An Introduction by Sven Nyholm. Then getting a little bit more intense. This is not going to be for everyone. This is like deep, rich philosophy and Cognitive Science, this is Mindware, the second edition by Andy Clark. Really, really good book. It's going to be a tough read. And then The Mac Daddy of Them All, Artificial Intelligence, A Modern Approach, and this is the fourth edition. This thing is huge and thick. If you want to know just like everything about AI, the nitty gritty details, the philosophy, the psychology, all of it, this is the book for you. This thing is massive. It's a huge old textbook. This is going to be the one if you want to know everything about AI. But if you've been paying attention to AI at all lately, you know that ChatGPT is all the rage. So I have one book here to help you understand what's going on with large language models like ChatGPT. So this is by Stephen Wolfram. It's what is ChatGPT doing and why does it work? No history of AI would be complete today unless it talks about the large language model phenomenon that is taking the world by storm. So this is one great resource to learn about large language models. Another great resource is Brilliant. Okay, so if you know me, you know I love Brilliant. And that's because Brilliant is where you learn by doing. It has thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and artificial intelligence. Brilliant is a learning platform that was designed to be uniquely effective. They have a first principles approach to learning, which helps you build understanding from the ground up. Each lesson is filled with hands-on problem solving that let you play with concepts as you learn them, a method proven to be six times more effective than just watching lecture videos. Plus, all the content on Brilliant is handcrafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers, and professionals from MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google, and more. Brilliant helps you build critical thinking skills through problem solving, not just memorizing. And through their interactive and fun courses, you can learn a little bit every day, which is the best way to learn. My favorite brilliant course right now is How Large Language Models Work. This is an immersive AI workshop that helps you experience and harness the mechanics of today's most advanced tools. Through this workshop, you can get hands-on with real language models as you explore how they build vocabulary, choose their next word, and more. It will also help you understand the importance of training data by letting you compare models that were trained on Taylor Swift lyrics with models that were trained on a cookbook or big text terms and conditions. And it'll help you learn how to tune a large language model to generate different kinds of output, whether it's poetry or a cover letter. So right now, my Park Notes audience can try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days. Just visit brilliant.org parknotes or click my link in the description or my pinned comment. And you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. So big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Now let's jump into the history of artificial intelligence and my just broad overview of the current projects going on, the state of the art of AI. Real quick, I keep a commonplace book for my artificial intelligence readings. If I'm reading a book, if I'm reading a paper, I will abstract out quotes and ideas and put them in here so I can have a quick reference of key terms, key figures, the history of artificial intelligence, cognitive science, all that good stuff. I've also recently started a notebook dedicated to artificial intelligence presentations, whether it's on a podcast or at an AI conference. 
So these are just notes that I take while someone's presenting on artificial intelligence. I was taking my AI notes in my other just general philosophy lecture notebooks, but I realized this is something I want to specialize in. So I'm going to dedicate my own notebook to it, my own commonplace book so that it's easier to find and to help myself get in the right headspace when I'm studying artificial intelligence. So I decided to have a separate notebook for notes that I take during someone's presentation than uh, my commonplace book. This is going to be more intentional. I'm usually abstracting out the marginal notes that I write on papers or in books, and I put them in here. But these notes are more in the moment. I'm trying to synthesize what the author is saying. I'm trying to make connections. I'm trying to write down the most important aspects of their presentation. And it's going to be way sloppier, way more manic, way more crazy looking. So a lot of times I'll abstract out the most important information here and put it in my commonplace book later. So for instance, these are notes that I took from Ben Gertzel's presentation on the three viable paths to true artificial general intelligence. This was at MindFest 2023. And I'm so glad I took these crazy notes because this presentation has really shaped the way I view artificial intelligence. They've also led to two awesome podcast episodes with Ben Gertzel on my podcast, Parker's Pensies. So that's just a note on taking notes when you're studying artificial intelligence. But let's get to the overview and history of artificial intelligence. I'm going to pull from my contemplatio, my personal compendium. This is just a notebook where I abstract out ideas I want to chew on and think through instead of scrolling on my phone. And I bring this with me to reflect and contemplate on really cool ideas. So here I've abstracted out and synthesized my own history of artificial intelligence from several of the books that I'm recommending in this video, mostly from Margaret Bowden and Melanie Mitchell. But here I've included just a quick one from Andy Clark. Clark traces the success of artificial intelligence today and the development of cognitive science to three main figures, Blaise Pascal, Alan Turing, and John von Neumann. He says the whole project started because of the formal logics that Pascal worked on. Then in 1936, Turing developed the formulation of computation in some pretty important papers, and then the actual physical engineering of computers and high-level algorithms done by John von Neumann in the 1940s. That's like, that's super quick, super fast. But Bowden traces it back to the 1840s with Lady Ada Lovelace. She was thinking about like proto-robots and artificial intelligence, though not by that name. And she predicted this glorious epoch of AI, where an AI might compose elaborate scientific pieces of music, and there'd also be a scientific revolution brought on by artificial intelligence. It looks like she was kind of grasping at what we call the singularity today. Her friend Charles Babbage had this idea of an analytic engine. This was like the first actual AI robot. That was in 1834. It was made of gears and cogwheels, and it was ultimately unsuccessful, but it was like the first stab at an actual artificial robot automata. So Bowden's tracing the history of AI back to Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage. You might want to trace it back to the rationalists like Rene Descartes because he did a lot of thinking about automata and how we might determine whether or not a robot was conscious, sentient, or a true human or not. So Descartes kind of came up with the first proto-Turing test, but I'm sure someone else can find it all the way back in ancient China or in Plato or some other thinker. So if you have another spot where you think I should start my history of artificial intelligence, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Moving on from Charles Babbage, we have Alan Turing. We've skipped a lot here. This is into the 20th century. Like Andy Clark said, you know, Turing has the formulation of computation. In 1936, it said that he showed every possible computation can, in principle, be performed by a mathematical system, something that we now call a Turing machine. Now, some people may quibble with this and say, no, Kurt Gödel's incompleteness theorems show that this is not true. I don't know. That's a debate for another time. And in 1948, he helped design the first electronic digital computer. Another huge name in that is John von Neumann. Turing's probably most famously known for the Turing test, his imitation game. The test is meant to show whether or not a machine can think. If it passes Alan Turing's Turing test, the imitation game, then it can rightly be said to be thinking. I think the test probably presupposes behaviorism, a philosophical theory of mind, and a related psychological theory, wherein what matters most is the behavior of a system or a thing and not necessarily its mentality. If a trained professional like a psychologist can't tell whether or not they're speaking with a machine for a certain period of time, then that machine has passed the Turing test and it's right to attribute thought to that machine or maybe mentality. Probably not consciousness. I don't know that he was thinking about that, but that's the gist of the Turing test. Next up, we have the Dartmouth Workshop. This was huge in 1956. It's actually where the term artificial intelligence was coined by John McCarthy. It used to be called computer simulation, which now has a totally different connotation and meaning and 
theory and, and all sorts of stuff. But the Dartmouth workshop, I think, was three months over the summer, and it was meant to create artificial intelligence. People laugh at these scholars now because they wildly overestimated their abilities and underestimated how difficult the task actually would be. I think they assigned a graduate student the task of solving computer vision, like in a couple weeks, which if you know anything about artificial intelligence, then you know computer vision was notoriously hard to crack, and they may not have cracked it yet. So there's always been this kind of debate on the best way to produce artificial intelligence, but the debate got really heated in the 1960s, especially between mathematicians and logicians on one side and the psychologists on the other side. There's like the good old-fashioned AI folks who are really interested in logic, and then there's the connectionist folks who are saying, hey, no, we need to make AI more like the neurons in the brain. In 1965, I.J. Good coins a term ultra intelligence and says ultra intelligence will be our last invention. And this further motivates the idea of a singularity. Once machines start making machines and we get artificial general intelligence, we're then going to get super intelligence. And then from there, who knows? There's going to be an intelligence explosion. 1987, artificial life and evolutionary systems come into the fore and more scholars start looking at man's origins and say, hey, why don't we produce artificial intelligence in the way that it's assumed humans came about? And at the same time, computers are improving dramatically, which gives a boost to connectionism because they need a lot of compute power and faster computers in order to do what they do. The connectionists also come up with distributed processing, which is really important for like ChatGPT that we have today. 2002, Ben Gertzel popularizes the term AGI, Artificial General Intelligence, which helps demarcate that project from other types of AI which are narrowly focused on one particular task. Artificial General Intelligence is what we see in science fiction all the time. This is something that can generalize in the same way that humans can, instead of just playing Go or just playing chess or just solving CAPTCHAs or something like that. Okay, so then in 2017, Google releases this paper, Attention is All You Need, and this just exploded everything. This is the introduction of transformer neural network models. Without this paper, you're not getting OpenAI's release of ChatGPT on November 30th, 2022. Now I put the full date. This may become infamous depending on how AI is integrated into society or, you know, lack thereof, whether it just explodes all of society and destroys our humanity as we offload more and more of our creative abilities to an unthinking, unconscious machine. But, you know, We'll see how things go. Anyways, OpenAI releases ChatGPT, their GPT-3 model, and that stands for Chat Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. And now that everyone knows about the GPT systems, we're off and running. I think we're probably on to 4.5 now. So that's just a quick and dirty history of artificial intelligence. I've mentioned a couple different AI projects and systems. Here I've included just the main ones going on today. We have symbolic AI. This emphasizes logics and symbol processing programs. The uh, detractors call it GoFi, good old fashioned artificial intelligence. I think that's pretty funny. But there's still these guys hanging around today doing good work. There's connectionisms. These focus on the strength of the connections between digital neurons. These were originally meant to mimic the systems of the human brain, though how closely those are associated with like our actual neurons is debatable. But when you see connectionism, think of ChatGPT and the transformer neural network models. There's cellular automata. It's hard for me to say because I want to say automata but uh, it's automata, I guess. These projects focus on building emergent AI from emergent patterns, and the patterns are a particular kind of computation found in automata theory. I actually don't know a whole ton about this, but check out stuff from Mike Stephen Wolfram. There's the A-Life movement, artificial life. This seeks to replicate intelligence in a digital life form through a process of digital evolution meant to be analogous to Darwinian evolution. These folks think, hey, Darwinian evolution produced the human mind. Let's mimic that in the digital world and produce a digital mind. And then there are hybrid models like Ben Gertzel's OpenCog Hyperon. These are hybridized AI systems which incorporate two or more of the systems I just mentioned. So Gertzel's system uses different types of logics. So not just classical logic, but fuzzy logic, intuitionist logic, induction, and, and other stuff like that. It also incorporates connectionist large language models. So again, think ChatGPT. And it incorporates artificial life systems, which Ben says will help with creativity. Now, when it comes to building artificial intelligence, intelligence is actually a really important word to get clear on. The original goal of artificial intelligence was to map the human mind and to mimic the human mind. So to produce the same kind of things that natural intelligence can produce, like playing chess or solving math problems or navigating through the world. Those are the kind of products that AI was meant to produce that would be mimicking the human mind. But a lot of researchers also wanted to map the human mind. Hey, if we can create an artificial intelligence, then we can back engineer it and figure out 
ourselves, our own natural human intelligence. This was especially the goal of some of the psychologists involved in the early neural net side of artificial intelligence and connectionist side. But when trying to analyze intelligence, there's these two categories which give rise to four subcategories. There's fidelity to human performance, and then there's like this formal understanding of rationality. So do you want to make an artificial intelligence to be faithful to human performance to be like a human being? Or is rationality a broader category where humans are one, but there's also dolphins, there's maybe aliens, maybe angels and God, like rationality is up here and we're just one type of rationality. So depending on what you have in mind when you think of intelligence, that's going to determine the type of AI that you're aiming for. So do you want your AI to act humanly? Think back to the Turing test. Does it act like a human being? Or do you want it to think humanly? This would be creating an artificial intelligence that thinks by the same type of means that we think. So maybe giving it a brain and maybe giving it neurons and such. So on the more formal side of rationality, you have acting rationally and thinking rationally. Thinking rationally may focus on logical laws and laws of reasoning, and acting rationally would focus on producing rational outcomes. So not just thinking rationally, that would be an action as well, but actually going out and navigating the world in a rational manner. Now, as Aristotle said, humans are rational animals, but we're not always rational actors. And maybe we're not the gold standard of rational action or rationality simpliciter. So the goal here is to realize rationality instead of just human rationality per se. So there's a quick overview of the projects going on in artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence, and a quick breakdown of the goals of AI to mimic the human mind and to map the human mind, to be faithful to human performance or to realize a broader category of rationality. That's probably too much. I hope I didn't lose too many of you guys. If you're still with me here, then drop a robot emoji in the comments. I want to see who the real ones are. But enough from me. Let's go in on some of the resources that I think can help you understand artificial intelligence. Okay, so first up for book recommendations, I have Artificial Intelligence, A Very Short Introduction by Margaret Bowden. If you're going to get one book, get this book. I love these short little introductions from Oxford University Press. Every one that I've read has been fantastic, but Bowden's is especially fantastic for artificial intelligence. I've taken a ton of marginal notes in here to help me understand what's going on. I refer back to this often. So let me just read the contents here. Chapter one, what is artificial intelligence? Chapter two, general intelligence as the holy grail. Three, language, creativity, and emotion. Four, artificial neural networks. Five, robots and artificial life. Six, but is it intelligence really? And seven, the singularity. Six is the chapter dealing with philosophical problems with consciousness, sentience, and defining intelligence itself. She gets into things like John Searle's Chinese Room argument against strong artificial intelligence or conscious or sentient AI. She's actually done at least one debate slash conversation with John Searle on that argument. I think Searle probably won that exchange, but if I can find it, I'll leave a link in the description. It's a fascinating conversation. So grab this book, Artificial Intelligence, A Very Short Introduction by Margaret Bowden. The links for all these books will be in the description. If you buy them from my affiliate links, then you'll also help support my work. Next up, we have Artificial Intelligence, A Guide for Thinking Humans. This is Melanie Mitchell's book. She is fantastic. She does go into the roots of artificial intelligence like Bowden, but she spends more time on machine learning and more modern projects in the AI world. So if you want to understand like neural nets and machine learning and big data and how it's used to train large language models, as well as computer vision and stuff like that, this is a really, really helpful book. So I actually recommend grabbing both of these books and it will really help you understand where we are and how we got here. But those two books don't quite get us all the way up to today with OpenAI and ChatGPT. So I want to recommend Stephen Wolfram's book, What is ChatGPT Doing and Why Does It Work? Now he first came out with this as a blog post. You can probably still find that, but I wanted to grab the book because I like making marginal notes. I haven't marked this one up yet, but the blog post was super helpful in helping me conceptualize large language models. Next up, we got some philosophy of artificial intelligence stuff. Artificial You, AI and the Future of Your Mind by Susan Schneider. She's a friend. I love Susan. She's the best. She's a first-rate philosopher of mind. This book's really helpful for introducing you to a lot of the puzzles in the philosophy of artificial intelligence and personal identity. Susan has improved on Alan Turing's Turing test by including questions that were influenced by Philip K. Dick's Void Kampf test from Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which is just hilarious because it started as science, moved to science fiction, and then moved to philosophy and the science and philosophy of artificial intelligence. So I just love seeing that interplay. But some of the sample questions here are like, could you survive the permanent deletion of your program? What if you learned this would occur? What is it like to be you right now? Could you or your inner processes be in a separate location from the computer? 
from any computer. Why or why not? So these are questions to determine whether or not a machine is conscious. Now, this is all predicated on the AI engineers not baking in consciousness terminology into the training data of the AI. So like we can't do this with ChatGPT because they've been trained on all sorts of blog posts and books where human consciousness language is used. So all that to say, this is a fantastic book on the philosophy of artificial intelligence and even transhumanism. Next up, we have This is Technology Ethics, an introduction by Sven Nyholm. I've recommended this book before on the channel. Sven's another one who's been on the podcast before, like Susan and Ben Gertzel, so maybe I'm biased here, but I love this book. Now, this is a philosophy book. It's an ethics book, so it will introduce you to the philosophical dilemmas associated with artificial intelligence, but it will also introduce you more broadly to the philosophy of technology, where the philosophy of artificial intelligence is a like proper subset. So I highly recommend this book, especially for his treatment of the value alignment problem, the control problem, and some of these transhumanist post-human type ethical dilemmas. So another great one. Now, those five books are introduction and intermediate books, but if you want to go even further into the philosophy side of things, I recommend Mindware. It's an introduction to the philosophy of cognitive science. This is the second edition, and it's by Andy Clark. Andy Clark is a fantastic thinker. I love the way this guy thinks. But this is right at like the intersection of philosophy of mind and artificial intelligence and computer science type stuff. Andy Clark calls mindware things like our thoughts, feelings, hopes, fears, beliefs, and intellect. Cognitive science is super duper fun, especially when it gets more philosophical. So once you have a good grasp of where we're at in artificial intelligence and how we got here, you may want to step into the philosophy of artificial intelligence a little bit deeper and get into the philosophy of cognitive science. This is the book for you. And then lastly, if you want to know just everything about AI, then you want to grab this book. Artificial Intelligence, A Modern Approach. I have the fourth edition. I'm pretty sure they're going to be pumping these things out like at least once a year because of how fast AI is changing and developing. Usually these kind of textbooks will come out with new editions every year. And it's kind of a scam because there aren't that many changes. But at the rate at which AI has been changing and adapting and improving, I'd say this is one of the books that actually does have changes from edition to edition. So this is edited by Stuart Russell and Peter Norvig. This is just a behemoth of a book. I'm working through it now, so you're not going to see a whole ton of marginal notes. I pick and choose which chapters to go through. I'd like to get through it all, but some of it's just not relevant for me because I'm not a computer scientist. I'm trying to be a philosopher of mind who thinks about artificial intelligence. But still, this is one that I'd like to be able to say I read cover to cover and understood as much as makes sense for me to understand. This thing's a behemoth. It's a brute. So good luck getting through it yourself. So those are the books that I recommend in order to help you understand where we are with artificial intelligence. But there's also a lot of free resources that you can take advantage of today. There's the Machine Learning Street Talk podcast on YouTube. These guys are awesome. They don't only talk the engineering side of AI. They also get into the philosophical side of things. And they have really fantastic guests. I think this is where I first heard Melanie Mitchell, which led to me grabbing her book and taught me just a ton about AI. There's the great Substack page called Ahead of AI where the author is like on the cutting edge of developments in AI and keeps you abreast of all the new developments. If you're on Instagram, you might want to check out the AI page. This is kind of like some gossipy like news stuff, but it'll keep you apprised of all the new developments going on in AI and show you a lot of cool videos, which may actually terrify you. So maybe don't watch this before bed or you'll have nightmares. Then there's also my podcast. I've had a lot of really cool philosophers and AI engineers on my channel in order to help me understand what I've been reading and learning. And I've made a playlist of only the AI episodes. So you can find that link in the description along with these other links. Then if you don't know by now, Lex Friedman, his podcast started off as the AI podcast. You can find a lot of the early episodes with AI researchers, and he still has a lot of AI folks on. So scroll through his podcast and watch the relevant AI ones. And then same for Joe Rogan. So maybe you find the folks on Lex Friedman, and then you can go search Joe Rogan Experience episodes for the same thinkers and double down on folks like Ben Gertzel. And again, all of these will be linked in the description so you can start learning today. All right, so that's it. That's a brief history of artificial intelligence and a broad overview of the current state of the art, as well as a bunch of resources to help you wrap your mind around what's going on. Now, if you guys made it this far in the video, you're extra super special. So leave me one of those like flexing robot arms so I know who the real real ones are. And if you guys like this video, then leave me a like and leave me a comment if you have other resources on AI that you think people would benefit from. Drop those in the comment section and make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications so that you never miss another episode on study habits, 
books to read, and deep philosophical meanderings. All right, that's going to have to do it. I'll catch you guys next time.